Thanks so much. Um, isn't it great? Uh, this is like one of the best problems to have. Our community is getting so big that people are meeting each other for real and like then recognizing who each other are. And we actually have too much content for 30 minutes, so we're going to move pretty fast. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is there is a JavaScript robotics book out now. Um, this is the Amazon page for it. It's available on Kindle, too. And um, most of the authors are here. Uh, raise your hand if you wrote a chapter for Make JavaScript Robotics. Um, yeah, uh, if, if, if nine or ten of the authors are here. I, need, I should probably move this up a little bit. But um, yeah, so check it out. It's on Amazon, and it's a great book. And if you have a paper copy, um, most of us will find it, I think, if you walk up and ask. I mean, none of us are that mean. We don't bite, do we? Uh, no. <laughs> no? No. Yeah. So One or two people asked, and it, it was kind of weird. It was like a weird <laughs> moment. I it never was... thought that anyone would ever ask me for an autograph for a book. That was kind of cool. Yeah, that was definitely that was, yeah, it was definitely a culture shock for me too. So um, the first thing we want to talk about is the stuff that happened yesterday. So one of the questions I've got a few times is, I didn't sign up for NodeBots, but I want to build what was at the NodeBots workshop. So what do I need? Um, the main thing you need is one of these Runt Rovers kits. Uh, we used the Peewee at the, the workshop yesterday. It's less than $20 for the kit. You do need an Arduino Uno to go with that. Uh, Rick can tell a little more about that while I show some photos of the So um, I'm super stoked that you brought that up because after RobotsCon, um, I published a five, four, four or five part blog post series on Boku's uh, company blog that was how to assemble the robot that you got at RobotsConf. So as it turns out, I plan on doing exactly the same follow up for this project uh, in the coming couple of weeks. It'll be an article on Boku that is how to build the, um, the Pee Wee Runt Rover that you may or may not have acquired at uh, JSConf or saw somebody else had and would like to build the same thing yourself. Uh, parts list, of course, instructions, videos, pictures, all of the above. Um, mm -hmm. and it'll be reviewed and revised thoroughly and look forward to that. Yep. Um, so how we, we also have some really great photos of the Node Boats event. And while Sarah talks a little about what happened there, uh, Rick, if you want to get set up with your um, you're set up, awesome. Then I'll let Sarah take it away, and then we'll, we'll go to your demo. Yeah. Um, yesterday, we had the second annual Node Boats event here at JSConf. Um, it was pretty awesome. We had about 60 people, I think, uh, here building boats with us. Um, and I think uh, every team except for one ended up getting their boats in the water sailing around at the end of the day. And the one was because they were trying to be very ambitious and like hack digital cameras to include them in their boat somehow, or disposable cameras or something. It, it was pretty cool, but very ambitious. Um, and uh, yeah, we actually saw a couple of new designs come out of this year's uh, Node Boats. Um, we had someone build a sailboat, which was really awesome. That was like a really cool design. We haven't had sailboats before. We've had motor boats and paddle boats, but this was the first sailboat, and it worked, which was cool. So uh, tell us about the ducks. I heard there were ducks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so at the end of the day, <laughs> that was the best. At the end of the day, we went down to the big hotel swimming pool, and we had a race across the pool with boats, or you know, just boats sw you know, going around in circles when the Wi-Fi cut out and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> um, and so uh, to, to get around the Wi-Fi issues, a couple of, of boat attendees um, just hardwired the motors directly to the battery so they could go on and forward and, and like didn't have much other control, but that was fine. Uh, and while these boats were zooming around the pool, a duck came and landed in the pool because it wanted to win the best no boat award, obviously. <laughs> uh, um, and so the boat or the duck was was just kind of swimming around, checking things out. And then one of these out of control node boats just like started going straight at the duck, just full speed ahead. And the duck started swimming out of the way and was like, "No, this boat is getting too close for comfort," and took off and flew away. Uh, but we also had some really dedicated attendees this year. We had one team where they went to Walmart to get like pool noodle noodles to use to like prop their boat up better, and they actually like got a. Yeah, they, they got a Barbie doll and shaved her head to turn her into, like, the the girl from Mad Max. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Louie was helping with that. I was delivering coffee to the members. I, I, I was delivering coffee to the members and, and carrying items around. It was all them. Okay. So, it, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> Coma Doof and Furiosa at the same time.
time. Curiosa. Curiosa. Her. I haven't seen the movie, but yeah. <laughs> you, oh, I, oh, that movie. Oh, that movie. I want to be in Paradise Curiosa when I grow up. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, Rick, you have a demo for us. Sort of. Uh, sort of. For, uh, <laughs> b before, before I talk about this, I want to mention that Sarah is actually the author of a chapter in the JavaScript robotics book. And her chapter is about building a node boat. So if you want to build a node boat, you can purchase the book and get instructions directly from the expert. So that's pretty exciting. Um, also, second thing, a lot of times uh, robotics research uses uh, animals in the wild as, as models, obviously, for new types of uh, uh, robot designs, and it just occurred to me that if we strapped a node boat to a node copter, you would have a duck bot. <laughs> <laughs> there might right? have to be a workshop next year. Duck yeah, bots? So <laughs> node, node ducks? No, node duck <laughs> bots. We did actually get uh, a team building a boat where the way it was constructed, when it got to the side of the pool, it would climb out of the pool. Oh, <gasps> amphibious <laughs> node boats. Oh. How did it do that? Like these spokes with paddles on the ends, and so the spokes would end up doubling as wheels once it got oh to the Oh my edge. gosh! That's amazing. amazing. <laughs> That's incredible. We can nerd out on that for like the next 30 minutes. Um, All right, so I'll tell yeah. you about it. So this, I don't know if I'll hold it up. So this is a, uh, 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 thank you, Francis. Uh, I've been working on this for a few months now, um, and it was inspired by a blog post that I saw by Dr. Uh, Esther Kim, she had done a, a tiny little demo where she was doing video streaming from an Intel Edison. I was like, that is so cool. I want to try that. Um, so I decided to do that. You might notice, you might actually recognize the chassis. This is like the older sibling of the Peewee. It's called the Scout, I believe. These chassis are awesome. It's like snapped together. It was so easy to build and drill holes into to customize. Yeah, there's actually a bunch of them up there. S yep. It, it, uh, which, which one are we? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I lied. It's the whippersnapper. <laughs> yeah, whippersnapper. <laughs> this is whippersnapper. Where did I get Scout from? Anyway, so what makes this fun and interesting and special to me is that I can stream uh, 128K, 30 frames per second <laughs> over a, sockets to a browser and get full, um, like, real-time video stream and to a browser with a set of controls. Uh, actually I actually have video that I took with my phone at my computer of me driving this thing around f from my couch on the floor of my apartment and crashing into my French bulldog who seemed to not care at all. Uh, <laughs> and of course, this is running entirely independently on uh, the Intel Edison board. So the JavaScript is running in Node on the board. So you just plug it in and wait for it to boot up, and there it is. It's a robot being programmed by JavaScript running in Node that can also stream amazing video uh, beautifully over web over sockets to a browser, and it allows for this uh, control interface that's just buttons in a browser that allow me to, you know, click buttons like it's like a you know command center, control center, or whatever in my browser and drive it around completely remotely. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. So oh, did I mention also that it's completely like standalone? Like how incredible is that? So this has been like a passion project of mine for the past uh, couple of months. Um, right now I'm struggling a little bit with supplying the right uh, 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 amount of power just to the board. Everything else has the right amount of power, but the board, I'm having problems getting it right. Mm. Once I sort that out, I, I'm, I'll be really excited and, I'm, of course, publish some kind of article on the Boku blog about how to build it yourself. And um, I guess I'm looking forward to when that day happens. It might be a couple, maybe a couple of months on from now. But, uh, but yeah, it's what's super cool about it to me is that it is it's all JavaScript running on this board, so it's it's embedded JavaScript on an embedded device. So I have a bad joke for you. Tell me about Would your bad you joke. Would you say this bot does reconnaissance? Uh, here's not 
I'm 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 gonna thwart your joke. <sighs> Guess what this robot is called? What is this ro recon bot? So it's really funny that recon bot was holding your recon bot. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So uh, two. I, I named it after Francis. Yeah. Very specifically. <laughs> so I, I found it really funny when Francis picked it up because it's recon bot holding the recon bot. The other thing I'm is honored. for those of you who've never dealt with an Intel Edison, what it is, it's a stamp-sized computer. It's got, uh, does it have Bluetooth LE built into it? Or is it just, no, it's Wi-Fi. It's got Wi-Fi built into it, and it's stamp-sized, and it's got several different shields that you can put it on. Uh, SparkFun has some shields that are actually really tiny. And so you can build what looks like a smartwatch out of an Intel Edison and an OLED. And we actually, oh, we do have the, the parts here. Oh, yeah, there you go. So his the Edison is on a, a larger shield. You could also get shields like this that are, and this is a full computer right there. Pretty great. Yes, because it runs Linux. How much do they run? Uh, the, the module itself is like 50 bucks. Okay. Module, oh, sorry, he, he didn't have a mic. Module itself is 50 bucks, and then the shields are anywhere from like 20 to 40, depending on what you get. Like the OLED one's like about 40 because it's got an OLED on it. Can, can um, I ask? It seems like maybe there should be a cheaper single chip computer. That is a fantastic segue into our uh, first Hey, Isn't That Cool segment. So uh, our first <laughs> Hey, Isn't That Cool segment is. Uh, I actually found out about this when I asked Twitter, hey, what should we talk about at NodeBots Live? This is called the Onion Omega. It is a $9 computer. Yeah, yeah, what? Exactly. <laughs> um, it's got Wi-Fi, it's, it's Wi-Fi enabled. You can install Node on it. It's, it's not available yet. They are currently still making it. They have docks, much, that remind me a lot of like the Spark, the Spark IO shields. They do have an Arduino shield dock, so if you want to use Arduino shields with it. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's apparently $9 for this little, Omega Onion, and it's got Wi-Fi built in, and it's amazing how uh, the price points are dropping on these Wi-Fi enabled microcontrollers that also happen to run JavaScript, which is amazing. Uh, we have one more demo, uh, well, uh, one more demo and then a, a small talk. So we've got a video demo from Donovan of what is, yes, this is Donovan, and um, he's going to explain the demo because it, it's seriously one of the coolest things I've, I've, I've ever seen. So about a year ago, maybe it's been less, we added uh, an animation library to Johnny5, which allows you to, instead of just saying servo.2 to send a servo to a particular position, you can script a servo over time. Think uh, it's a lot like animating something in Flash. Um, so you're able to set a servo to go to a certain uh, position at a certain point in time, um, and you, uh, you can set up as many queue points as you want. Um, we support easing and different kinds of functions. So that gives us the ability to do pretty complex scripted movements with the robot. Um, that's how this hexapod, that's not what you're seeing here actually, um, but that's how this hexapod walks is with these uh, scripted movements using the animation class. But it's also possible to override the, um, the rendering method that we use in, in the animation class. When you override the rendering method on a servo, and we can apply a rendering method to an array of servos. Um, Johnny5 has a servos class. And you can override the rendering method and pass it through an inverse kinematics solver. That's what we're seeing here. Um, it's responding in real time to my movements, uh, my hand movements over a leap motion controller. And it's solving the angles for each of the legs um, in real time and, and rendering that leg to the, to the proper position so that everything stays uh, in the right place. You know, everything's in contact with the ground. And that's going to be an uh, add-on module for Johnny5 called Tharp. Um, and it should be out hopefully in a week or so. So what we're looking at here, is that you controlling the hexapod with your hand? That is me controlling the hexapod with my hand with a leap motion controller, yes. Um, so funny story, I remember when you first sent me this video, I was at home and I was watching that and my sister was behind me and she immediately asked me, that's CGI, right? <laughs> she, she, she seriously thought that they, someone had CGI'd your hexapod in there because she's like, wait, he's controlling it with his hand. I'm so scared right now. And I said, why? And she goes, I can just imagine my new robot overlord, like with a guy just standing on a balcony doing this and robots to start attacking. Like, well, <laughs> one thing I've learned is that we don't really have much to fear because they fall down and break a lot. <laughs> That's comforting. <laughs> Could you tell us a bit about inverse kinematics and like what that does for you? So uh, I'm totally unqualified to talk about this, but here it goes. Um, kinematics is the, you know, the art, I guess, of finding um, the position of an end effector, the end effector being the part of the robot that interacts with the real world. In my case, it's, it's the feet of the robot 
Um, a lot of robots, it's the hand, the serial manipulator uh, kind of thing. Um, but it's the, the art of finding where, uh, forward kinematics is the art of finding where that end effector is in space given the length of all your joints and the angles, I'm sorry, the length of all your um, uh, limbs and then the angles of each of the joints. Um, inverse kinematics is doing that in reverse. You're giving a, a point in 3D space and an origin point and you're solving all the angles and lengths that you need in order to get your foot where it needs to be or your end effector where it needs to be. Uh, so, well, so, something to add is that for every joint you add to the chain, uh, the calculation becomes exponentially more complicated. Um, so you can imagine a hexapod with 18 servos on board. How, uh, so that's, th th wait, how many per leg? I'm Three. brain dead right now. Three per leg, yeah. Um, so that's not trivial. Uh, and as a reminder, that's JavaScript from the top down. It is totally JavaScript, totally Johnny Five. Um, but actually, we only have to solve three servos. We only have to right, solve one right. leg at a time. But still, uh, it made my head hurt. Six legs. <laughs> yeah. Six legs to solve. But so. now everybody can do that. Well, you know, it, it takes a lot less math because of the animation library. And this is also a good segue into Johnny Five has a new website at johnny-five.io. Um, it is no longer just a wiki page. We have nice styling. This was developed at Boku. Uh, not, not that the wiki page wasn't awesome, this is just awesomer. Um, so you can now look up the API documentation. Uh, the other thing that I worked on yesterday is if you use da the Dash documentation application, the, the one that downloads all the docs for you and, and shows them in Alfred, I launched yesterday a doc set for Johnny5 that is now in beta. And so soon I'm going to actually get that contributed in the Dash. So that, the no more switching between browsers to like rate your code. Oh, don't, don't applaud me, applaud Donovan. Like that was, that, that demo is amazing. Um, well, so that is, uh, so our next really cool uh, topic, yes. Sure. Uh, just real quick note about the website. All of the content on the website comes from the Johnny5, the existing Johnny5 wiki and the existing Johnny5 repos example programs. Mm -hmm. So if you, edit the wiki and like update it and improve it somehow or whatever, the next time I deploy the site, your changes just automatically are included with that because open source for the win, right? Mm -hmm. So if you also want to write like new examples for, uh, for anything, you're like, oh, this is some cool use case that I came up with, you can contribute that and it will be automatically included in the website on the next deployment. So your work for all to, to see and share, yep. um, which, is like my favorite part about the website. So, yeah. sorry, you can move on now. And if you're new to electronics, um, this is one of the things I, I'm super proud of with Johnny Fudge documentation. There are fritzing diagrams for just about every example and every API page. So if you've never done electronics before and you need to know how to wire something or you're afraid you'll, you, know, you don't know how, uh, Johnny Five Docs are very, very good about having fritzing diagrams for just about every example we write so that you can replicate our projects fairly easily. So our next really cool uh, topic slash product is Bluetooth LE is getting really easy to get a hold of. And it's get, uh, we, we have a node module that makes uh, Bluetooth LE a lot easier to use. It's called Noble. Uh, the maintainer is actually at the conference. I don't know if he's here at the taping, but uh, Sandeep is here at the conference. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really easy to use Bluetooth LE and, uh, with, with node now. And um, one of the really cool products is uh, the Light Blue Bean, which is pretty cool. Uh, $30 little, it's tiny. It's, it's, it's uh, about, actually, it's about that big. Um, and so it's got Bluetooth LE on it. It's got its own battery, which is pretty neat. And uh, it wirelessly syncs. And um, you can use Node with it via, uh, Louis, you actually wrote the Bluetooth, the, the Johnny5 plugin, right? Uh, there's a bean-io mm -hmm. um, Johnny5 plugin. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, if you put a specific uh, Fermata sketch on the bean and connect to it with, uh, uh, well, have your uh, bean-io instance connect to that bean, you're doing Johnny5 on all the GPIOs on it. And then the other way you can run Node is it does uh, support Node Red out of the box, which is a, it's yep. more of a point and click programming language that'll allow you to do stuff with it in the cloud. So if you're, you're dealing with kids or people who are new to coding in general, Node Red is also a really good way to use that. Uh, with it and Bluetooth modules that we can attach make we mean we can have more wireless Johnny Five bots because you can do a serial port over Bluetooth just like you do with your USB cable and so if you have a Bluetooth module working either on your Arduino or with a microcontroller you can have wireless node bots because yeah and um, 
Yes, uh, so uh, NodeBlue and um, OctaBlue, these uh, flow designers, uh, they actually reach down into um, a, a, a gateway of some sort or uh, NodeRed itself, and uh, they can talk to, uh, to Bluetooth you know, sideways across you know, the local area. Um, uh, an interesting thing also about um, this awesomeness being all JavaScript that, uh, that Rick wrote here with um, Johnny5 is that we are able to do things like have um, Bean-IO, um, Johnny5 running on, say, a tablet or a mobile phone, mm -hmm. um, because we could just shim, uh, maybe using Cordova, the same uh, noble libraries, and then uh, you can make a, a phone UI using Johnny5 code, talking to a light blue bean, connecting to GPOs, controlling something like this, and it, it's mm -hmm. all just one set of JavaScript code um, from the uh, Johnny5 API standpoint. Yeah, we've, we've been really quiet so far, so who likes JavaScript in here, audience, that has been super <laughs> quiet? I can't, what, huh? what, what, there we go, there we go, it's just been really quiet in here today. Um, so I just I'm have a, a yes. question though, so can, can I do this today? You can do this, you can do this today, um, so there is, it's actually, um, it, it was one of the things that Octoblue had put together, uh, they commissioned me to, to write a shim for Cordo uh, Cordova to do a, uh, to do a noble, um, a noble shim for Cordova. Right, so you, you can, I actually have an example on the iStev blog of how to do that. So you can use uh, a bean from, yeah, from an Android and iOS device, whatever. So that's a cool segue. We were talking about the stuff we can do today. I want to use a node bot in my browser. Can I do that today? That, funny you ask. <laughs> Uh, you can't. <laughs> so there, there's actually um, a, a few projects going on. Um, so in the education space, you know, uh, Chromebooks are you know 150 bucks, uh, really cheap. Um, tablets, you know, are getting really cheap. So um, we'd like to do all this stuff because it's written in JavaScript um, in in browsers. Because um, you might not have the ability to uh, easily install Node on one of these things that's really mm -hmm. just running a browser. Mm -hmm. um, so Pavel over there, David, everybody involved with the um, uh, the Robotnik uh, yep. application. Really cool. Uh, this is browser-based. Um, it is um, a Blockly, um, so using blocks to create Johnny5 objects um, and run those. Really awesome. You should check that out um, on Robotnik. I believe it's on Pavel's uh, repo on GitHub. Um, also, uh, so what iStep is doing, we're, we're uh, taking the approach of having Johnny5 code uh, uh, specifically, um, and we've got a... Um, an IDE called ChromeBots. Uh, we have an we had an early version we demoed at uh, RobotsConf. It was it was really just a proof of concept. Uh, Blaine over there has been putting uh, a ton of work into this, and it's actually uh, becoming a good IDE now in a browser mm -hmm. for Johnny Five or, or, or for robotics in general, but um, with file management and uh, and everything. And so mm -hmm. keep an eye on that because it's uh, it, it, it's going to be really good when we're so, done. So so we're getting to the point now where someone could pick up an Arduino or a board yep. and not even have to install Node, they could just open Chrome, yep. Firefox, or a browser, write some JavaScript, and control a robot. Absolutely. That's where you're getting at. And uh, what's really cool is you don't even need the Arduino IDE mm -hmm. or command line Arduino or anything because of work at Jacob Rosenthal, who may or may not be in here, um, here ha has is. done. Uh, <laughs> so that it, it actually uh, will write the Fermata sketch. Um, so yeah, grab Arduino, plug it in, and, and go. That'd be great for the Johnny Five website. That way, like when you use Johnny Five with Node, you wouldn't have to install the Arduino IDE. We could just put a button on the website. Absolutely. Oh, I see a pull request. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go work to do. I just want to say about uh, Robotnik. Uh, last year at NodeBots Day, which is July twenty fifth this year, is that right? Uh, uh, last year at NodeBots Day, my son used Robotnik to build a Pavel bot and get it running uh, all by himself. Uh, he's just he was nine years old at the time. Uh, no scratch pretty well, and the whole interface is very much like Scratch. So if you have kids, it's a it's a great tool. So that segues into our last two topics because we only have a couple a couple minutes left. Um, one is NodeBots Day coming up in July 25th, so it was kind of a cool segue. Um, who here has been to a NodeBots Day before in their city or anywhere? Okay, cool. This year, I want all those hands to go up. Um, NodeBots Day is an amazing event. It's worldwide. So basically, uh, check your home city. If there's not an event, run one. It's way easier than you think. Um, so, well, actually, I got someone to do all the work for me in Austin, so maybe I shouldn't say that. But it's so worth it. Um, so anyway, uh, you should definitely participate in NodeBots Day, uh, international event, really great way. Even if you just have barely started doing NodeBots or are brand new to it, um, great way to get started. I think most of us have run a NodeBots Day event at this table. Most, yeah, 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 you keynoted at one, and uh, yeah, so, yeah. So um, the last topic I have is NodeBots Live, the podcast. So this has been cool. 
Like doing it every six months on video, Chris Williams has been super great about letting us use Track B to record a podcast, which seemed really weird, but it worked out. Um, I actually want to take this to a monthly podcast. So I am starting a Patreon to get uh, funding because I do not have any podcast equipment. I do not have any editing experience. And so I'm going to try to like get this going for y'all. So um, check the NodeBots live Twitter if you're interested in helping out. Um, there will be a Patreon up soon. And um, we have a couple more, oh yeah, we have like two or three more minutes. So uh, what, oh, uh, one more really cool product that is coming out. Um, the Esperino Pico is pretty cool. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, so if you've never heard of the Esperino, that's actually what's powering this. It's a controller that, it doesn't run Node, it runs like a modified version of JavaScript, but it's very simple, like writing it, you don't really notice that much of a difference from JavaScript. And he just released a new version that is itty, itty bitty. What? My tabs are tiny, so I'm having trouble finding. There we go. So it's about like, ha like three quarters of an inch long and about half an inch wide. And it fits in a USB socket. And a uh, very interesting uh, project. So any other cool stuff that you all have uh, thought of before we run completely out of time? Well, I, I just want to uh, give a shout out to this team of developers. A year ago, I was sitting in the audience thinking I would like to contribute to open source. And I was nervous and scared about doing it. And I got involved with Johnny Five, and they have been incredibly supportive. And I have learned so much, so much more than I ever would have just doing my work every day. It's made me better at work. It's made me better, a better developer. So thank you, guys. All the field. <laughs> I'd like to add that Donovan is also like my right-hand man now <laughs> on the Johnny Five project, like code-wise. Like, I go to him for advice about every single thing, like every major decision we have to make, I seek his advice. And also, David Rezegi, who is in the crowd as well, these two have become sort of like my, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, like I, I can't run the project without them, so it's become less of an I and definitely much more of a we. Uh, and it continues to become a bigger we, which is exciting. How many contributors do you have? Over 75. Raise your hand if you're a contributor to Johnny Five. How Either many contributors eight. do you have? Over 75. Yeah. So um, let's give a round of applause to the community. Woo, community. Yeah. So we've got a few seconds left. Can we get a little music? Like any music is fine. Because we have to dance. It's a tradition. <laughs> And you're welcome to dance with us. We are not. <laughs> Thank you very much. This has been NodeBots Live, and we will see you again soon.